Okay, two pieces of good news. Uh, news num good news number one, uh, I uh, turned off my fan, which was the source of the rumble that you might have heard in those last two videos. So apologies for that. Um, so this should be a much quieter video. Uh, and good news number two is that we're going to look at array lists, which is uh, cool and um, not too hard. Um, so uh, let's get into it. Let me just show you the guide. The guide. Here we are. So um, Python didn't have arrays. Python only had lists. They looked and behaved a little bit like arrays, but you could grow and shrink them um, as needed. And that's kind of what makes something a list and not just an array. Uh, with an array, you have to say how big it's going to be before you start, um, and it can't, you can't change its size. Uh, a list starts with size zero uh, and then grows as you add things to it, and you can remove things from them, you can insert things into it, and so on. Um, so a list is a really handy data structure uh, to have, and you'll learn a lot about lists and different kinds of lists in your data structures course, which will be in fourth semester. But for now, we're just going to do a brief intro to a particular kind of list um, called an array list. So there's, this is where it is in the handout, uh, section three, and it's in the textbook, 12.1. Uh, I'm just going to create a little piece of code here for you, and uh, you can follow along if you want. Array list examples, like this. Okay. So I'm going to create a, just a, a main method. Just do this in a main method. That's e the easiest thing to do. Uh, and I need to create an array list as an object, um, but not just sort of an object like an array is. It's an actual object type. Uh, but the type is a little different than what you've seen before. So I go array list. Uh, I do have to import it from java.util. And there's something else I have to do when I'm declaring an array list. I have to declare in angle brackets here, which are greater than less than signs, what I'm going to store in the list. And this can be any object type. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that includes objects that you've created. In fact, why don't we go ahead and store circles in here? Um, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be doing something a bit like that in the assignment. So I'm going to I'm going to store circle objects in my array list. I'm going to call it uh, circle list. So that's the declaration line, like that. That declares even though this looks weird. That's a type. It says uh, it means array list of circles. Um, these are called generics, and you'll learn a lot more about them in data structures. Um, and it's going to be called circle list. Right now it's going to be null. I just have to add a new array list um, like that. And this syntax looks weird. The, the diamond brackets are needed. Um, you can put circle in there if you want, but you don't have to because you already specified it here. And then this shows that we're calling the constructor um, for it. So this is going to get us an empty list. Now circle lists are, uh, sorry, array lists are true objects. So if I go system out print line, uh, circle list dot, um, you can see all of the different uh, methods that I can call. I'm just going to call the size method. So when we run this, we should see an array list of size zero. Oops, I did it again. I ran the code from the last video. Uh, there we go. So it just outputs a zero like that. If I want to add something to my circle list, so I can create a new circle, circle C equals new circle, like that. That just creates a, a new circle. I think we don't have a constructor in there defined. It just creates a circle with a radius of 50. So I'll go back here and then I can go circle list dot add C. Uh, and that adds that circle um, to my list. I can also do it like this circle list dot add uh, new circle like that. That adds a second circle also with radius of 50. And then I'll do one more. I don't have a proper constructor for this, so I'm going to do um, C dot set radius 100 just to give it a different radius. Don't need to redeclare it like that. And then I could do circle list dot add C again. So each time I uh, did the C, it was a different circle. The first time it was one circle, the second time it was a different circle. Um, add just adds things onto the end of the list. So now if I go system out print line C dot size, I get, oh, not C dot size, circle list dot size. I should get three. There we go. So initially it was size zero. Now it's of size three. Um, how do I get go through the list and, and look at stuff? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. You use a for loop just like you would with an array. It's an index data structure like an array. 
I can say, uh, I can use an index. So I'll start with i equals zero and I'll go up to circle list dot size like that instead of length, like it would be for an array. And then I can do this system out, oops, system out print line, circle list dot. And then you have to use, cause it's a proper object. You can't do this. You have to use its get method dot get i like that. Um, I'm not sure if my circles actually have a two string now that I'm doing this. Yeah, they do. So there you go. I added two circles of radius 50 and one of radius 100. Okay, um, and that's how you look at them. Now you can also, and this is what, is what I would recommend for something like printing them um, or drawing them or something like that, you can use an enhanced for loop. So you could say uh, for every circle uh, called circle, and we can just like we could put an array here, we could put circle list here. So this, this format takes a lot of different types here. It can take an array or it can take an array list. And there are other types it can take as well. And it's going to do the same as it would for an array. So this, this is the exact same code we would use for an array of circle objects, system out print line circle. And that's going to print. So you'll see, let me just do a system out print line here to space them out. But you should see uh, the list of circles printed twice. Once using the regular for loop and once using the nice um, the nice version of the for loop here that uh, that uses the enhanced for loop. Okay, um, so that's, I mean, there's not much more to it than that. There's a few other things that I can show you. Um, let me look, my third circle here, I added it. Uh, it when, when you call add like this, you're adding a circle to the end of the list always. Okay. So to the, to the highest index in the list, but you can specify where you want to add it like this. So add is overloaded. So now I'm saying put this at index one and it's going to move everything else over. So when I start, I create one circle and I add it to index zero and then I created and added another circle at index one. And now I'm saying put this in index one, which is going to move this circle over. Basically, I'm inserting now. So you'll see they'll come out in a different order. 50, 150 now. So you can do that as well if you need to. And you can also remove. So circle list dot remove, let's remove item one. That will take this circle out of it. Uh, and I can do a system out print line of circle list dot size. And I can also um, do this, print out the circle as well, print out the list of circles. So after the remove, we should have um, nothing left in there. There we go, not nothing left, we should have uh, no, um, the, the one with radius 100 is gone, has been removed from the list. <clears throat> so for the assignment that's coming up, uh, you're going to use an array list of uh, geometric object objects, so polymorphic array list. Um, and you're going to be adding and removing, um, always adding to the end and removing from the end. So there's not much more to say um, than this. Um, there are a couple of other little wrinkles. Uh, we're not going to really need this for any assignment, but like I said, this has to be an object type. But what if you wanted to store an int, an int or a double in here? Those are not object types. If we go to the array list handout code, um, you can do it. Here's the example right here. But you have to use every primitive type, like int and double, has a class that goes with it called a wrapper class. Um, and uh, so this says I want to store objects of type integer. This is where that code for parseint lives, right? Integer.parseint. Um, and I can also create a new integer object and give it a value. Um, but it'll do that automatically for me. So it is possible to make it seem like you have an array list of ints. So see here, I'm adding ints. What it's actually doing, though, is it is... Uh, <clears throat> it is boxing them up inside of an integer class object and storing them in the list. So in the background, it's pretty seamless, but in the background, it's storing objects of type integer, but I can, I can act like they are objects of type int. Um, oh, I have to, this code uh, does a bunch of stuff before it gets to the auto boxing test. So what I did here was I've created an array list of integers. I added these integers to it, and then I go through and I'm summing up each one. And this is where you have to remember, I think, oh no, this is okay too. 
So you can you can treat it like it's just integers for most of the time. You can treat it like it's ints. You just have to remember that when you create the array list for integers, it has to be of type integer, or you can use double like that. Um, or you can use, if you want to do characters, you can use char with a char, oh, sorry, character is the name of the class, and so on. But most of the time it would just be ints and doubles. Strings are already objects, so you don't have to do anything. Um, so, yeah, so the, even this, I, I didn't need to put integer e here. I could just put int and it's going to pull out, it's going to unbox them. Um, okay, so that's just an extra little wrinkle if you want to do primitive types. And this is all covered here, how to declare an array list. You should look over this because it explains it in a, in a little bit more detail, how to use the size method, how to add things, how to remove and how to get. And then the two um, types of loops that I showed you for processing an array list. And then this last little bit, um, this part here is all about auto boxing. Uh, so you can read in on that, like this doesn't work. You have to do this. But other than that, you can, once you've done this, you can basically ignore it and act like it's ints, so it's okay. And then finally, the last little thing here is I'm just pointing out that, you know, when we did, for example, Starfield, which contained a bunch of stars, or Slot Machine that contained a bunch of wheels, um, actually ArrayList would have been really nice for that. So we could have created an instance variable of type ArrayList, uh, and then we wouldn't have to know in advance how big our Starfield is, for example. We could just... We could start with no stars and we could have methods to add a hundred more stars, add a hundred more stars and so on. So this, this gets you what's called the cleany star multiplicity. So now it says here zero or more. Now we can really do that and we can be dynamic about it because we have array lists that can grow and shrink um, to hold as many, in this case, as many bank accounts um, as we need. So a bank might have a thousand bank accounts, then they need to add one. You can do it really easily with an array list. Okay, um, there's a few exercises here that you can try. If you want to get just some practice with just, just basic array lists, these are just A, B, and C are just main method um, implementations of array list. If you want to get some practice that's maybe a little more relevant to what you're going to do in the assignment, go back to the Starfield exercise. If you don't have code for it, in week six you'll find solution code. Um, and so in that case, a Starfield contains an array of star objects. Um, change that to an array list. So array list of type star. Um, you'll have to, once you do, what I would do is I would start going to the star field object of the solution, change the array of stars to an array list of stars and create it with using new array list. Um, then you'll see you'll, errors will start popping up through the code. So then you just have to go and translate each thing that you're doing to uh, array list language. So get instead of the square brackets, um, add instead of, you know, you'll have a, a loop that goes through and just adds to the end a bunch of stars instead of adding them to particular locations and so on and so on. Okay, um, so that's what I think you guys should try. Um, and after this, we're going to go into another fun topic called mouse events. Um, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. So I'll see you in the next video.